afternoon. If you will reach down between your legs, pull out a hymnal, we're going to be using a hymnal tonight. Anyway, if y'all would, let's all stand. Let's turn to page 29. How majestic is your name. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God. Oh, Lord, God Almighty. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic. Tonight, Mr. Carter. Sure, no, sir, we're, good. we're good. All right. Does anyone have any announcements need to be made tonight? He's not going to do it. <laughs> we are glad to have you here at Calvary Baptist Church tonight. And, and tonight is you pick them's night. So pick your favorite song. If we know it, we sing it. If, if, if you still insist on singing and I don't know it, you can come up and lead it. So. Somebody give me a song number, page number for their favorite song. 141. We're going to sing the first verse of each and every one of these songs. That way we can get a few more in. Gotta watch old color over some people when I don't know. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thing from this side over here. What we got over here? Do what? Okay, everybody talk at one time so I can hear you. <laughs> 337. 
The last verse of 337. Listen, sing the last verse. I know not when my Lord may come at night or noonday fair, nor if I walk the veil with him or meet him in the air. But I know whom I have believed it and am persuaded that he is a Men, we talked about that earlier tonight about his favorite song, and I know somebody else that this is one of their favorite songs too, and that's Steve Osborne over here. It's my one of my favorite songs also. Next song. Three oh three. Now I got that side started. We we that's all right. This is not the one that we know. There's another just as I am. Yeah. It's page 307. Is that the one you was wanting, 307? That's good. We know that one. Three oh seven is not in your book. Okay. <coughs> Now we're going to use this section for a little while here. 438. Heaven came down. Let's all stand for this one right here. And let's sing all three verses, if y'all don't mind.
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Just thank you for the many and blessings you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to get to come to your house tonight to worship in your name and in your spirit, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you'd be with our church during this time. Lord, just be with Steve as he brings our message tonight. Lord, I just pray that the words he gives us tonight, that we can just apply them to our lives, Lord, that we can just follow you even closer than what we are. Lord, again, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening. Good to have you back this evening. I know you came back for pancakes, but this is what you get first before you get pancakes, okay? I don't know if, if you've ever been where I've been. Sometimes you forget about the things that you've got. You're so blessed until you don't have them anymore. You ever been there? And, and so I want to journey. I said this morning, I'm talking about that word grace. Now, I want to ask you what grace is, and it's not, Father, thank you for this meal, amen. That's a form of grace. You're saying grace but tell me what you believe grace is. Got to use some specific words. Neil, what's grace? Peace. Okay, good word. What's grace? Forgiveness when we don't deserve it. Unmerited, undeserving grace. I'm in 2 Samuel tonight, Old Testament, chapter 9. It's an amazing story, I don't know if you've read it yet or not, about grace. And, and this is what led, it, led me to this, as I was asking God to direct me, because I was talking, Kim and I were talking with a friend, going through a very difficult situation in their life, in their church's life, and the phrase that she said, just, it, it broke my heart. She goes, the people who are attacking us, don't they remember grace? Wow. Wow. How quickly we forget what grace is when, when something else is happening. How quickly we turn back into the flesh is what I want to get to. We want to turn right back into the flesh that we say we're no longer in. We're in the faith. But man, I tell you, when something bad happens, we go straight to the flesh and we start attacking. But in 2 Samuel, David is doing something so beyond what normally happens. And this is the story I want to read to you. I've, I've somewhat been trying to get hooked on phonics because... I asked God so many times, why this? Because there's some difficult words. I'll say them as I say them. You say them as you say them. In 2 Samuel chapter 9. So David asked, Is there anyone still left of the house of Saul to whom I can show kindness, which would be grace, for Jonathan's sake? Now there was a servant in Saul's house named Ziba. They summoned him to appear before David. And the king said to him, Are you Ziba? At your service, he replied. The king asked, Is there no one still alive from the house of Saul to whom I can show God's kindness? Ziba answered the king, There is still a son of Jonathan. His, he is lame in both feet. Where is he? The king asked. Ziba answered, He is in the house of Makur, son of Amali, and in Lodibar. So King David had him brought from Lodibar, the house of Makor, son of Amalie, when, okay, this is, this is me, Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David. He bowed down to pay him honor. I'm going to stop right there and kind of fill you in on a few things why this is so important. Because usually when you take over somebody, when you beat up somebody, when you destroy another enemy or, or another uh, 
village or town and you take them over, it says it's customary for that king who's taken that throne to eliminate the family. Eliminate. Not put them in jail, not banish them. Eliminate, parentheses, kill them all. And so David was asking, if there's anybody left, I've, I've taken, I've, I've destroyed, I've conquered. Is there anybody left? He, he, had, he's, he destroyed his, his greatest enemies, the Philistines, the Moabites, the, the Syrians. He was victorious and he was sitting on the throne. And he says, God has been so good to me. How can I show this grace back? Okay? How can I show this grace back? A lot of times there's some commercial out, and I'm not sure what it is, but values.com, but it always talks about something bad happening and that person going, oh, well, okay, it's all right. Now, maybe you might have a hard time getting over your antique vase being broken, and maybe you won't. Maybe you're having a hard time getting over, you know, Aunt Sue's prize doily that won the blue ribbon in the fair getting stained, and maybe you don't get over it. There's a lot of things, folks, let me just tell you, that we should get over and can get over, but we don't get over. We like to stay in the valley and start throwing our flaming darts at people. And that's not what Christians do. And so my question tonight is, where did you find grace? Where did you find grace? I'll just pause for a minute and let you think about that, since I just sprung it on you. Grace, unmerited, undeserving favor of God, where did you find it? Maybe for some, you found it in the bottom of a bottle. For some, found it in some deep, dark place you knew you'd never be. But just like this morning, as Paul said, I can't believe I, I don't want to do the things I know I don't need to do, but I do them, and the things I need to do, I don't do. And yet we condemn people for all that. It's called sin. And so many times in our lives, we have to understand grace. Grace is a horrible word to the devil. Because instead of grace, the devil wants us to gripe and sling, and spew, instead of giving grace out. Grace is power. Grace is the power behind the gospel. It's not religion behind the gospel. It's not philosophy. The gospel of grace. Unmerited, undeserving grace. I wonder where we're at tonight, Christian family, in the giving of grace. Where did you find grace? Any, any takers on that question? Where did you find grace? In God? Unconditional love from God? Anybody else find grace in, in a person who, who, who forgave you and, and, and welcomed you back to the fold and welcomed you un, 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 uh, unashamedly? Russell. Okay? But you've got to think about where you found grace because many of us were down in that pit. Many of us were down in that hole. Many of us were undeserving. And David could have said, okay, son of Jonathan, son of Jonathan, who was the son of Saul. So this was Saul's grandson. And let me tell you, this, this young man was, was, was lame, it says, in both feet because when the attack was coming, the nurse kind of scooped up. I'm looking at his name again because I had it split up. Mm -hmm. Come on, say it. I may Bible chef. There you go. There you go. And it's just one of those names. But but as she scooped him up to run from the attacking army, she dropped him, breaking both of his ankles and crippling him for all of his life. And could you just imagine minding your own business and somebody scooping you up to take you somewhere, and then something happening to where your life was changed forever? His life was changed forever. And David could have had him killed, but he didn't. He wanted to show him grace, and we're going to get to the grace that he showed him. Because David stopped. Mabibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David, bowed his head to pay him honor. David said, Mabibosheth, at your service, he replied. David said, don't be afraid. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan, I will restore to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul. And you will always eat at my table. Can you only imagine being called to the king's throne, knowing that it's going to be over for you? Then to receive not only grace, but to eat at his table all the days of his life? You will eat at my table. 
What an amazing statement. Mephibosheth bowed down and said, What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? What he's saying is, I am so unworthy. I don't deserve this. How, how could you possibly bestow such a great honor upon me? And so many times in our lives, church, I know this, that we have sinned, and we might be in our dark place, in our weeping place, uh, flat on our face, prostrate before God, saying, I don't deserve the blood that shed over me to clean me of my sins, but by the grace of God, I will take it. Or you've seen that person with the sign on the street corner, kind of disheveled looking, dirty, will work, am hungry, whatever it says, and those words, there by the grace of God. Am I? Or you see somebody whose car is stranded at the side of the road. Their, their belongings are piled up outside. It's jacked up. They're trying to get stuff done. And you're like, oh, God, there by the grace of God am I right there. Please protect them. And you kind of throw that out there. But David was showing grace that normally is not shown. As it was said, they usually eliminate the family. Eliminate the entire family. And he didn't. He was showing grace. He had subdued his enemies. He was on his throne. He wanted to bestow back what had been bestowed to him. Where did you find grace? I don't mean when you've sinned and they say, okay, I forgive you. I'm talking grace. Unmerited, undeserving grace. Understand this. I believe grace finds you. I believe grace finds you. David said, is there not anyone in the house of Saul, that I may show kindness of God unto him. He was looking. Grace comes looking. Just real quick, and I'll just use my language. Anybody ever been bummed out? I know that's not a biblical statement. You know what I mean. Bummed out, down to the dumps, depressed, woe is me. You got the blanket, pull it over your head. I'm kind of out of it for a while. And then somebody comes along. A little ray of sunshine comes along. It says, hey man, come on. It's going to be all right. Why don't you come with me? It's going to be okay. An amazing phrase right there, it's going to be okay. Because that phrase, you can unpack it a little bit, which means it's not okay right here, right now, but it's going. And in order to get to the going part, you've got to get up and start going. I know sometimes we like to sit. We like to sulk. We kind of get sour. But you know what? Isn't that on us? That truly is. Because I believe in this room right here alone, we are packed full of wisdom. And yet sometimes when words or phrases come into our life through somebody else's lips or somebody else's fingers on a keyboard, we're like, oh, man, can you believe that? And all of a sudden, our common sense, our wisdom went away. And we just became ignorant. We forgot about grace. Grace comes looking for us. David was looking for someone to bestow grace upon. And then grace reminds us, there's nothing we can do. Thank you. Thought of himself as a what? Dead dog. Dead dog. Think about that. What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me? He thought so little of himself. Then the king summoned Ziba, Saul's steward, and said to him, I have given your master's grandson everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and your servants are to farm the land for him, to bring in the crops, so that your master's grandson may be provided for. And Mephibosheth, the grandson of your master, will always eat at my table. He was telling him, and understand this. Now, Ziba had 15 sons whoo, and 20 servants. And yet he picked out this one man, Saul's grandson, to say, I want you to understand, you are to farm his land, bring his crop in, for he's going to be eating at my table. I am bestowing upon him grace. Think about that for a minute. Mabibosheth well, had a young son named Micah, and all the members of Ziba's household were the servants of Mabibosheth. And Mabibosheth lived in Jerusalem because he always ate at the king's table. He was lame 
in both feet. And God ended like that because it reminds us, folks, he was lame in both feet. And what about electric wheelchairs then? No, not so much. Crutches? Not so much. How do you think he got around? He was carried. How important is that? That David would seek probably somebody who is less than whole to, to show grace upon. And I believe without a doubt we have to understand this, that God's grace not only grace will find us, grace pursues us. I was listening to a pastor by the name of Chris Seaton, and he used a word about how much God loves us. And the word is woo. He, he wants to woo us. Think about that word. He wants us to fall in love with him. And David was showing this grace because Mabibosheth was in a place called Lo Debar. And Lo Debar means barren, desolate, destitute, hiding. He was in the desert. He was gone because he thought he was going to be killed. And God's grace not only found him, but pursued him. Because David said, go and get him. Pursue him. What's happened to our grace as servants of the Lord? We are here serving a gracious God who bestowed his son's love upon us, unmerited, undeserving, and we received that, haven't we? We thank you, God, for your grace. But what about our grace out? What has happened to our grace? You understand we ought to say a lot of phrases, but that was awful gracious of you. It has grace in there. It means kind. I appreciate that. You've opened your home and you've welcomed somebody in. You've seen somebody and you've, you've bestowed upon them some food or some, some love. And, and all of a sudden, I don't deserve that. And that phrase hits us. We, we don't deserve that, but we'll take that. What's happened to us bestowing grace? I'll pause there for a minute because I truly want you to think. Because I wouldn't ask it if I don't think something's happened to our grace. Oh, how worked up we will get in the blink of an eye and the snap of a finger over politics. Oh, did you hear them on TV? Can you believe? It just took you a breath to get all that worked up. But when it comes to grace, hey, what do you think about God's grace? Um, um, we can't seem to find an answer. Especially about giving grace when somebody's fallen. When somebody has been in the muck, in the mire, and all of a sudden you see them being picked up and put on the rock and being redeemed, you're like, oh, I don't know about that. What, what don't we know about God's grace? Is there somebody outside that doesn't deserve God's grace? Is there somebody inside that doesn't deserve God's grace? So what we're saying is everybody deserves it. Then why don't we give God's grace? Is it because we will run out of it? Because somehow we'll be seen less of a Christian if we graciously tell somebody, I love you, you're forgiven, I'm here to help you, I want to carry you to His grace, I want to chase after you and show His grace, even in the desolate places that you are. Think about grace, just a couple of just little nuggets in the Bible. The Samaritan woman at the well found grace. Think about that right there. She found grace. I wonder where you found grace at. Were your ankles too broken that you couldn't get to David? That's okay because grace came to you. Grace chased after you. I know sometimes we like to condemn people because we haven't done that sin. We haven't lived that life. But think about the grace verses. 2 Corinthians 12, 19. My grace is sufficient. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. My grace is sufficient. And truly it is. To get us through, to get us past, to get us around, even to get us over if over need be. But we're going to get through where we're at if we believe that His grace is sufficient. And I know sometimes, what is the phrase? Oh, my patience is being tested. Anybody there? Oh, I'm at the end of my rope. Oh, my last nerve. Anybody ringing a bell? That's where sometimes we're at. If one more happens, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then it happens. 
And then you ask for an abundance of grace. My grace is sufficient. For he is seen strong in our weaknesses. And we have to understand, it's not a shameful thing to be weak. Because he will be strong through us and seen strong through us. Grace, understand this, is for everyone. Grace is for everyone, not just some, but everyone. And I'm wondering where you are tonight in the midst of this crazy world that we just can't seem to find peace or quiet in. Oh, just for a little peace and quiet. If people don't leave me alone, I don't know. And you can just on and on and on if I just had a little peace. God's grace is there for you. God's grace embraces. It embraces you to the point of consuming you head to toe, front to back, top to bottom. Grace, G-R-A-C-E. God's reward at Christ's expense is what we say in the acronym. It truly is, was at Christ's expense that we receive God's reward of grace. Has a child ever broken a, a rule at the house and punishment came? Punishment came to the form of, for the rest of your life. Might have phrase, might have been. And all of a sudden, a couple days, might even be hours later, the rest of the life ended and say, okay, come on out. And grace was given. Grace was given. I go back to a phrase before I end tonight. We are children of God, and we should have a childlike nature, inquisitive, looking, seeking. But when we turn from childlike to childish, that's when we miss the mark of what God wants us to be. He doesn't want us to be childish. He wants us to be childlike, embracing His grace, not just holding it, but receiving it and giving that grace to others. And let me tell you, in this hate-filled world, and we don't have to go too far to see hate. It could be right here. But understand this. We have the ability to extend grace just within an arm's reach of one another here. Because that's what we need to do is to be more gracious Christians. And in being gracious Christians, we can understand this. That God's grace is able to envelop and consume any hurt, any harm that's happened. Because I know so many times we've said, I don't think I could ever forgive that. As Kim and I were talking to a lady, in, broken, in pain, hard to get over, an, an unthinkable sin. But by the grace of God, they're going to get through this. And that's the only way. And what about you? What about us? We might be in a place or in a position where we think we'll never get past. I'm in a pit. I'm at a roadblock. There's no way around or no way through. Then God's grace chases after us, catches up to us, and carries us through. That's who we're going to be, church. We who seek to serve God will serve Him unconditionally with grace and with love to all who come into God's house. That's where we need to be. That's where each and every one of us and I just want to remind you that His grace is seeking after you. And when it does come, what will that grace challenge you to do? Seek others who need it? I hope so. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, Your grace truly is amazing. Unbelievable, amazing grace. And yet sometimes we get so in the flesh. And God, I think that's just a reminder of how shallow we can be when we say we're deep inside of you and, and we're not. God, we seek more of your grace because there's a world out there hurting. And we don't want to be part of a hurting world, Father. We want to be gracious. And so, Father, even tonight in your house as we learn about David and the grace that he showed by sustaining not just a man's life, but showing others what God's grace truly is. Let us do that tonight. Let us show others grace, unmerited, undeserving of love and forgiveness. 
So, Father, the aisles are open, the altars open. Father, I'm here if anybody needs a prayer. So, God, speak to us. Chase after us with your grace. And let us receive it graciously. We ask in your name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? you are so gracious to be back here tonight thank you i pray we get to go and show that graciousness out these doors not just to the pancake feed and thanking all those children for making pancakes but out these doors of this church where the world needs to see that god's grace is living in us as well all right lots going on check our website check the newsletter give the church a call see what's happening see how you can help terry you got what well, let's bless bless the food and then we'll sing on out here. Father, we do thank you for food that strengthens our bodies, God. And we thank you for the graciousness of our children's department for providing this meal for us. May we show them through the financial blessings you've given us. And some of these kids might not be able to go to camp without our love being extended through finances. So, God, tonight as we fellowship, as we laugh, we thank you for the blessings you have poured upon Calvary Baptist. Let us not hide nor hoard them. Let us show and share them. So thank you for this food that strengthens us. I ask in your name, amen. Terry?